5,000 banks connected to Ripple. XRP is being used on a massive scale. The world is moving to T plus zero, which is same day settlement or instant settlement. We're going to go ahead and get into that in this video, guys. There's going to be a lot of really good updates as well as some information from the past. So if you want to learn about XRP, let's get into it. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this news. So Tranquilo Partner will expand into Europe via InstaPay, Instant SEPA connections, and InPay will reach Asia. Trangolo will offer multi-currency X border payments B2B and B2C, business to business and business to customers. Trangolo and ODL XRP user. So SEPA is single euro payments area. That is their settlement system. Here is Trangolo has a ton of partnerships, over 1,300 banks, 100 countries. As you can see, Trangolo is a really big deal, really big partnership. They're connected to Alipay, which is really connected inside of China. As you can see, they have a lot of more connections, over 13. 1,300 banks in a hundred countries, right? So this is a big solution, right? This is a big partnership that Ripple has. Uh, and I think they probably have some ownership of Trangolo too. I can't remember off the top of my head how much of it is, uh, but I know they've been partnered for a very long time. And I think Ripple uh, has taken them over. Alipay partnered Trangolo integrates Ripple cross-border payments. This is even 2020. So this is actually older news, but uh, we're bringing it up now. Trangolo and Ripple in, into the Philippines. It's really difficult sometimes to get money into some of these corridors around the world. And when you have something like Ripple and XRP, you can move that value at the speed of light. And that's really what we're all hoping for, right? Is a big shift in the landscape of payments and XRP's adoption through that, that big shift. As you can see, T plus one key date, February 15th, 2023 was SEC announces the rule. August 14th, the industry testing begins. And as you can see, the transition weekend timeline is May to May of this year, 24th, May 25th, May 26th, May 27th. So a lot of stuff happening right around this May 24th to May 29th date a u.s double settlement date so we'll have to see if this in fact impacts xrp at all maybe could who knows uh, i know that the dtcc has been working a long time going towards the crypto route um, you know donald donahue who used to be the head of the dtcc uh, he went to go on and and be advisor at ripple for for many years and so i'm i'm hoping and and praying that one day the dtcc decides to use something like xrp uh, of course they could always use some type of other asset but i've seen a growing interest in in partnership over time we'll just see what happens the dtc and t1 we all know who they're using uh, this is why we're moving to T plus one. And so uh, here's a list of equities, right? All these different equities, fixed income, right? And then here you can see is T plus one impacted product scope, asset backed securities, ABS for global ABS. That's a big deal. Derivatives, right? Derivatives market is one quadrillion. That's just the uh, public market of derivatives. Uh, the private market of derivatives, really nobody knows how much money is, is kind of floating around that. So we'll have to see how all of this turns out right the trade settlement period will shorten one day beginning may 28th 2024 so that's pretty cool it's good to see uh bill morgan here says uh, firstly i did not say 5,000 banks will use xrp i said trangle uses xrp and odl for cross-border payments for its customers and its networks involves 5,000 banks which is which is true how many banks are involved in odl was not stated by trangle secondly you did not prove that no banks in the network are not involved in odl you filed some postings from a to a regulator in the u.s that contain risk disclosures of what may happen as part of its business if there if there are regulatory changes. All all you really proved is that no conclusive evidence that no banks will use XRP. I think at the end of the day, right, there's a lot of people that believe XRP is useless, and there's a lot of people like me that believe XRP has a place in the world, right? You have to decide with the information that you're taking on is is if you believe the technology behind XRP is really going to be used on a massive scale, right? And when I see central banks testing the technology and wanting to adopt the technology i i do see the the uh, cbdc that was issued in the in palau on the public xrp ledger i do see that as kind of like a proving ground or a place where the u.s can say hey you know this is a testing area for the u.s to just look at hey how is it being used in the economy is it being adopted are people using it daily right that's really i think what's happening there and then of course you have dubai fintech summit cbdc models are uh, compatible with fintech solutions ripple also see the picture below let me play this for you breaking down barriers to entry So 
it depends on kind of what, what what the country is, right? And if a CBDC will be helpful to that country. Some countries, I don't think you're going to see CBDCs. And I think, I think they'll look at the technology and they'll say, you know what, not, not for us. But I do believe some of the bigger countries are going to want to figure out how to move money more quickly for a cheaper cost. At the end of the day, it's about getting costs down. And that's what, that's what some of these bigger banks are, are a little scared of. Uphold plus Ripple employs Valkyrie, etc. So many agree that the XRP ETF is coming. Just know that, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people talking about an XRP ETF, guys. The SEC has to approve that, right? So I don't think they're, they're going to prove anything until kind of everything else is settled. We'll have to see how that goes. Also, when you look at the use case for XRP, you got to look at like what countries really is, is it going to be adopting and how, how much of an impact can it play? Let me play this for you. The reason this system works only in Africa is specific to Africa. There is 70% of the African population or between 50 and 70% that are unbanked. So by being unbanked, they don't have ID, therefore they don't have a bank account. So they still have mobile phones and they still, nobody wants cash, by the way. Cash is slowly diminishing also in places like Africa. So to do the tap and pay like you and I can have in our Android or iPhones, you buy credits from your mobile operator. That top up is now credit to go buy goods and services. So in the same way we top up from our credit cards, they just go to a kiosk, put their cash in, you now have $100 or $100 equivalent in your African currency in your mm. phone. So you have to do the tap and pay. This industry is growing at 40% year on year. In the, the mobile, mobile money industry, payments. 840 uh, billion in 22, over a trillion this year last year's figures coming into 24. Like the, the growth is insane. It's one of the fastest growing markets in the world in terms of volume and size. It's one of the fastest growing markets in volume and size. Tunes is another partnership that Ripple has different from Trangolo, just so you know. Uh, and Tunes actually is, you know, one of the bigger provider payment infrastructure for a connected world. Tunes is building a global payment infrastructure, 131 payout countries, 70 collection countries, 250 payment methods, 80 currencies. I uh, definitely can extra he can be used inside of this system. As you can see here, Tunes Transfer Go launches Ripple-based remittance platform to Europe and India, right? So I just want to show you this too. So in Africa, one of the biggest mobile money apps is Remitly. You got World Remit, Transfer Go, Wise. Some of these are pretty big. MoneyGram, of course, is here. And if you look at some of the partnerships here, Tunes is connected to Remitly, right? Also, you have MoneyGram here, you have Visa, you have Revolt. So some of the biggest money payment platforms in the world that are used in places like Africa can actually use XRP through some of these systems if they so choose to, to move value. Tensioning is rising among European banks. The SEPA changed over to a new version of ISO. Remember, ISO is just a messaging standard. It has nothing to do with XRP, XLM, or XDC, nothing at all. You did have Ripple who was helping kind of with the ISO timeline and helping with some of the wording and things like that and working with ISO, but you don't have any direct correlation with ISO and XRP. Yes, XRP can be used in this new system, in this new messaging system, but but not connected. Um, as you can see, with respect to the entry uh, into force time, 2023 SCT instant rule book is now set to Sunday, March tw uh, tw 2024th, right? So this just happened over the weekend. I don't feel anything different, but you do see a lot of things changing and happening and being updated in the background. And then this also says uh, not only domestic instant payments, but also cross-border payments are expanding rapidly thanks to emergence of new innovative infrastructure solutions such as Ripple, which are replacing correspondent relationships that's replacing the big banks that's what that's saying the creation of sct instant scheme and favorable technology environment environment customers have the opportunity to receive first rate services by using instant money management right and then you can see sebi approves launch of beta version t plus zero settlement march 28th okay and so this is same day settlement this could be instant settlement or this could be same day. We have, we have to kind of drill down on the details, but you can see that the world is moving to faster payments. You also have this here talking about the Financial Conduct Authority. And uh, this is actually from 2019. So this is a little bit older, but I just want to show you. The Financial Conduct Authority, that's exactly what they did. In fact, when I was just saying about the, you know, the definition of digital asset and then the three tokens, that's exactly what the FCA just did in revised guidance. And, and in fact, I thought they did a very good job of defining, you know, which digital assets fell into which categories and, and XRP, for example, has the attributes of both a utility token and an exchange token, which we thought, you know, was, was the right approach. 
Okay, so all of these banks and central banks were making decisions years ago, right? And this is 2019, right? This is right before the C word happened and the whole world changed and we're all different now because of it, right? So, you know, the world was looking at XRP as its true utility token and what to use to move value. And so that is why I firmly believe we're still uh, in a good place for this. The FCA is the Financial Conduct Authority. I just kind of said connections between FCA, uh, XRP and Ripple. Uh, the FCA is regulatory body responsible for overseeing financial services firms and markets in the UK and we know XRP is an approved asset in the UK and the reason why I believe that you know banks are going to be forced to use something like XRP and not Bitcoin because of AML uh, anti-money laundering CFT which is uh, counter uh, terrorism checks right there's all these different sanctions checks that have to happen when money moves from one bank to another and if you don't have those checks the bank could get into serious trouble Ripple is also excited to share that we are fintech breakthrough award winners and from 2024 best cross-border a payments platform and best DeFi infrastructure platform. So, um, you know, I will, I will include a link down below here. You can, we can just take a look at this really quickly. I wanted to get onto some other news, but it's good to see, you know, th this is Ripple kind of being a leader in the space and doing these awards. You know, some of these companies may grow to be some of the biggest in the world and some may just kind of fall by the wayside, but uh, here are some of the winners. We're not going to really get into all of them one by one. All right. So bank digital advocate, asset advocate, put, put this on, uh, down on the tokeny.com website. You can look at World World Asset Tokenization Ecosystem Map on the XRP Ledger. Uh, the logo isn't included on screen. It seems someone has intentionally adding it looking at a place from other blockchain network logos. So, uh, you know, London is ready to go. We'll have to see what happens with all of this, right? Real world asset tokenization map. I mean, there's a lot of real world assets on on XLM, right? I think with their partnership with Franklin Templeton, they've got like 300 million in assets. So it's still so early, right? We don't even truly have billions of dollars of assets yet uh, in tokenization of assets, right? And this is going to take shape over the next few years. But what, what we're hoping is that stocks, bonds, derivatives, that type of stuff will be digitized and brought onto the XRP ledger, right? You can digitize debt. You can digitize value. Uh, you can digitize bank, tokenize bank currencies, right? Uh, there's just so many different things that you can do with with the XRP ledger. Uh, and so that's really what we're hoping for. This type of adoption is really what's going to make our price grow, right? It's the protocol. It's just not the price of the token, right? And that's, you know, why a part of, part of my bags is XRP and it will always be XRP. Brad Garlinghouse, uh, Ripple, Jay Clayton, SEC. So this is from years, years ago, but what I want you to take note is this is FinTech Week 2019, right? They sued Ripple in, it was Christmas of 2020. And, you know, it's funny how you have Joseph Lubin and Brad Garlinghouse on the stage and they decided to go after Ripple, right? And you do have that $15 million payment from the Ethereum side to Jay Clayton's SEC. And so are they going to ever investigate this, right? Or are they just going to approve the ETF, right? And why would you, there's something there that I really wish you would, they would investigate and give us an answer to, because to this date, you know, Ethereum went on to make billions of dollars on a bunch of different shit coins and, you know, it's utility. I, I just did a transaction on Ethereum. I think it was a hundred dollars to do the transaction. Is that the future? Is that what we wanted to use, right? People are forced to go to layer twos on Ethereum to get, you know, a cheaper value to transact. That's that's sad, but that's really where we are at the status quo. And that's why I believe something like XRP is the future for payments and, and currencies. So we'll have to see how all of this stuff turns out, guys. I just wanted to kind of give you some throwback information and some current information. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, please give me a follow and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.